Hi guys and welcome to this iOS development tutorial. In this video we're going to be taking a look at UI search bars. So I've got the simulator up on screen and I'm going to pull up a sample application that I wrote earlier and you can see a UI search bar um, in action here. Uh, so basically what we've got on screen is a, an app that has a UI search bar up top and then it has a table view that can be filtered using this UI search bar. So let's see how that'll work. Um, what I need to do is just, uh, or the user would need to do, is simply tap into that UI search bar and start typing. And you'll see that as we begin typing, um, the, the values within our table view start getting filtered until you reach essentially the value that you want. Now you'll often see these implemented in applications and typically you'd also have some kind of a detail view so the user would be able to tap this row and it would load a detail view. To keep things simple we're actually going to simply implement the uh, UI search bar and the table view and you can see how it gets filtered. So let's get started doing just that. So firing up Xcode I've got um, the version that I'm currently running is version 4.5.1 uh, so if you've got at least that version you should be uh, pretty good to go we are going to use the uh, single view application template so uh, you could use any one of the others but this is the easiest one to use so we'll use single view application I'm gonna hit next it's gonna ask me what I'd like to name the project so I will just call it UI search bar and um, we'll set the device to iPhone and we'll also set use automatic reference counting we'll ch make sure that options checked. hit next uh, Xcode is going to ask me where I'd like to save the project. I'll just save it on my desktop. Hit create. And we'll need to give it a couple seconds to actually finish indexing the files. Uh, so here we go. It's uh, doing just that. Uh, since this is a simple project, there's really not that many files. So hopefully this will be just a second for us. There we go. Almost done. And we are good to go. Okay, our first stop is going to be our viewcontroller.xib or the nib file. So let's select that. When you've got the nib file open, you'll want to make sure that you've got your utilities view visible because we need access to the objects library. And if you don't see this particular column, don't worry. It's probably just hidden away using this particular button here. So make sure that's selected and you get the objects library. Um, it comes right back. So within this objects library, we're going to first look for the UI search bar. And there we are. So I will drag and drop this onto my view. Next thing I'm going to add is a table view. So let's drag and drop one of those onto our view as well. And looks like it didn't resize itself. No problem. Okay, with that done, our next step is to set the data source and delegate for the table view. And to do that, we just right click it and set the data source and delegate to files owner, which is just our view controller. We also want to set the delegate for the search bar to be files owner. So let's do that. Great. With that done, I almost always like to also create a um, outlet to both the table view and the search bar. It just makes things easier later. And um, so let's go ahead and do that. And actually, I just noticed that this table view might be, might need to get adjusted down a little bit. There we go. All right. No problem. Okay. So the easiest way to create an outlet would be to open up the assistant editor, which is this little tuxedo icon. I'm then going to right click and drag a connection here. And um, I'll just call this one my search bar to keep things simple. Hit connect do the same thing for the table view so just right click and drag a connection call this one my table view easy enough hit connect we don't need the assistant editor anymore so we can just go back to the standard editor by clicking that left icon and if we jump over to the view controller files you'll see that we've created these outlets uh, they are connected um, they won't be a, an at synthesize statement within the implementation file uh, that's because that is a new uh, language feature um, and so I like having them anyway so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, add them in so my search bar and my table view so we've got the app property and add synthesized statements now while we're in here uh, let's jump back to the header file and add a couple more items uh, for starters we're going to need 
two NS mutable arrays. The first array is going to hold our initial set of data, which is the list of the cities. And then the second array is where we will put objects or these NS string objects, which are going to be our cities. We're going to essentially copy these objects over to the second array based on what the user is filtering for. So let's go ahead and create that. So I'm going to say at property non-atomic strong and this is going to be an ns mutable array and not an ns array and we will call this initial cities i will also create another at property statement uh, and we're going to create essentially another ns mutable array like i said and we will call this one filtered cities and we need one last item it's going to be a bool variable and we'll just call this uh, is filtered simple enough and with that done let's jump over to our um, implementation file let's go ahead and add the add synthesize statement so what did we add here we had it initial cities filtered cities and we also added a boolean value called is filtered great okay well, that's our initial setup next what we can do is we can allocate and initialize our initial cities array with a list of cities all of the cities are going to be in a string objects uh, just to keep things simple so let's just say alloc and initialize and init our initial data and so we would say initial cities simply call ns mutable array alloc and then call the init with objects method and we will pass in as parameters a couple ns string objects so i'm going to set this to london new york And let's set it to Berlin, maybe Bombay. We'll set it to Kuala Lumpur or KL for all our Malaysian friends, Beijing and Sydney. All right, so that gives us a couple objects to play with. comma and that ends with a nil and we are good to go there okay um, at this point we could also go ahead and implement our um, table views data source and delegate methods but before we do that let me jump over to our view controllers header file now if you remember while we were in the nip file we had set the data source and uh, delegate for the table view and the delegate for our UI search bar to be files owner which is this view controller what we also need to do is explicitly conform to those protocols and the way we do that is we come down here we're gonna say UI table view data source UI table view delegate and UI search bar delegate command s to save and we've got all of that set up um, our next step is going to be to implement the various methods associated with the table view data source, table view delegate, and the UI search bar delegate. Okay, here's where I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut. Um, since this is not really a tutorial about table views, and the data source and delegate methods are kind of standard anytime you use a table view, I'm going to assume that you know how to implement those. If you've never worked with table views before, I would strongly recommend that you take a look at either my tutorial on how to create a simple table view, or um, you take a look at uh, one of the other tutorials uh, that are available on the web. I'm also going to be using something called Xcode, uh, it's called something called snippets in Xcode. They are a super handy way of really speeding up the development process. If you create a lot of table views, it just makes sense to put the table view data source and delegate method definitions within a uh, code snippet so you can easily edit it for your needs. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I've got a code snippet set up where if I type in TTT, Xcode is going to recognize that that's what I want to try and insert and it's going to give me an option. I just hit enter 
and there we have it. I've now got these methods that I or these method definitions that I've saved as um, a snippet are going to get inserted into my code. Now before we mess with this, I'm also going to want to implement the uh, UI search bar delegate method and to do that um, we, there's a very very easy way all we would have to do is jump over to our header file I don't always remember the uh, method signatures what parameters are being passed in but you can almost always count on the quick help to get you started so what we'll do here is we'll jump over to our header file I'll put my cursor over UI search bar delegate again I've got the utilities view visible and I've also got this option with the wavy lines which is the quick help inspector and then within that because I've got my cursor over the UI search bar delegate I get a reference uh, a link to the reference if I click on this it opens up organizer and shows me the reference for the UI search bar delegate now within this reference I am looking for a method called search bar colon text it change and this is the first method that we want and I can just sort of highlight this and copy this method signature so do a command C then I'm going to jump back into my implementation file and I'm going to add what's called a pragma mark and a pragma mark is essentially just this statement here I've got a snippet that's going to allow me to insert a pragma mark if I type in uh, PPP and that's what I get and I am going to type in here UI search bar delegate methods now here's why pragma marks are super handy if you've never seen them before if you've got many 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 lines of code and I've got certain files that that do have that um, it is sometimes difficult to have to scroll up and down just to find a particular method especially when you've got like I said many methods within the same file the easier way to do it is to add this pragma mark and then you can simply go up here and then you'll see them nicely broken down based on these pragma marks so uh, here we've got our table view data source delegate methods search bar delegate methods and we haven't copy pasted that yet so I'm gonna jump down here paste the signature that we just copied from organizer and uh, put that in there and now you'll see that if I go up here I've got these sections nicely broken down okay so while we're within this particular method uh, let's take a look at the signature we'll see that it is uh, of type void which means it doesn't return any value uh, it passes in a UI search bar object and an NS string object called text uh, called search text so what we want to do here is this methods gonna get fired once the user taps um, into the UI search bar itself um, we can then use this particular method to determine whether or not the user uh, has entered any text in that particular area. So the way we do that is we make use of this particular parameter that's being passed in called search text. We use a simple if statement. We'll just say if search text dot length is equal to zero, which means there's nothing entered in there at this time, we can we'll set our boolean flag and we're just gonna say is filtered is set to no the uppercase no here else we know that there's some text in there and we can perform some actions on them. okay so in the case of an else we'll set our again set our boolean flag and I'm going to set is filtered to yes on this occasion. We can also go ahead and initialize, initialize and in it our filtered data. So we can say filtered cities is ns mutable array alloc in it and we actually want the simple in it option there we go not the in it with objects command s to save and we have ne we're now sort of ready to use a particular language feature that's going to al allow us to iterate uh, or enumerate through our list of NS string objects that are currently in our initial cities array 
So I'm also noticing that the uh, this particular video is coming up on 15 minutes and to make things easier for people that are following along I'm actually going to end this video here and we'll pick up in part two to wrap things up. So thanks for watching so far. We'll see you in part two.